so the presentation is going to be on the effects of an intergalactic rainstorm. It's more of a cosmology project. Um, my project mentor was Dr. Mark Nearing, and he's in this room right now. So um, let's get introduced with a few basics before diving into the experiments. Why is this layer not working? Okay. Um, so the basic concept of this is firstly the cosmic web. So the universe is large scale structure. It's it's not light years. It's in like parsecs, megaparsecs. It's it's a web of galaxies and dark matter. And um, those galaxies and dark matter they concentrate in strands, which are called cosmic filaments. And that's these are effectively like highways for matter in the universe, where matter matter concentrates and flow. And the matter streams cross each other, they fold and they form the backbone of the cosmic web and hence the structure of our universe. Um, in terms of matter arrangement, the picture on the uh, right as on this one is a beautiful depiction of the cosmic web. And this one is part of the one of the simulations that we did. This is the density plot uh, of matter distribution and we can see eventually with um, generally this is incre increasing over time. So matter coalesces under gravity and they form interconnecting filaments. They leave some voids in the middle. Uh, so that's how the matter arrangement is done. And the initial distribution is completely uniform, um, but then there are some initial irregularities and perturbations and then the evolution happens accordingly. Um, so talking about rainstorm, this uh, as a precursor to it, we are trying to draw an analogy with river networks um, in nature. And uh, basically river network, what river network is, is a, it's a complex system of interconnected streams and rivers that resemble a web. And water flows from sm smaller tributaries into larger rivers, much like how matter follows, flows through the cosmic web. Um, in a watershed, water accumulates from rainfall and flows downhill due to gravity and it gathers into streams and rivers. And it also in some ways parallels the matter concentration in the cosmic web. The graphic here is uh, um, the evolution of a river network in uh, through a rainstorm. So as we can see, this is day one and it slowly increases up to 13 days and we can see the amount of we can see the increase of uh, water flow the color roughly re represents the water flow in the respective streams so the main the motivation for the research we are doing right now is first of all it's a fun project and we are trying to draw an analogy between cosmos and other branching structures in nature um, Dr. Nearing, my mentor, he also has a paper drawing a similar kind of uh, analogy between spider webs. And this is something uh, also drawing that kind of analogy. The second one is uh, ultimately we are trying to find uh, the implications in understanding dark matter and uh, acceleration in the universe, acceleration of the universe. So we are hoping this project gives us clues of signs of a cosmic rainstorm that may, might have happened at a certain point of the universe. And if we can find that kind of, that um, rainstorm marker in some ways, then we can s look for it in our, in our actual universe and see if uh, a cosmic rainstorm happened. Um, for the rest of the presentation, a key term to um, remember is um, expansion scale, exp sorry, expansion factor. This is the ratio of distance between faraway galaxies at time t to their current distance. So A of the current time is equals one because the ratio of distances to the current distance would be one. A, A generally increases with time, even though it's not a straight up proportionality. Um, Introducing the tool that we've been mostly using throughout this project, it's a 2D cosmological gravitational and body simulation de developed by Johan Hitting. Um, it is 
uh, written in Python and it's a very accessible code. It's easy to understand and it gives uh, the evolution of um, a two dimensional matter distribution. The number of particles uh, is 256 squared. It's a uh, just for information. Um, so the title of this slide is uh, influenced by the wonderful feedback given by Dr. Gramla uh, in the feedback session that happened a couple of days ago. So let's talk about the way we implemented how and how we implemented the intergalactic rainstorm. Uh, as we can see in the graph, uh, LCDM stands for lambda cold dark matter. Uh, let me pull out a razor pointer. Um, and EDS stands for Einstein Sitter. These are two models of the universe. EDS is a simpler model, but uh, lambda CDM has been found to be more the more accurate one. The simulations used in these presentations are almost exclusively from Lambda CDM or introduction to rainstorm within the Lambda CDM model. The plot is the log rate of change, A dot, of expansion factor plotted against the expansion factor. As we can see, there is a dip uh, in the orange curve, which means that we reduce the expansion factor of the universe for a period. So uh, the period is roughly, it's not a long period on a cosmological time scale. Um, the age of the universe approximately 14 billion years. This might be something like a billion years. Um, so we implemented a rainstorm. Uh, as we can see, because of this dip, the rate of change is falling in this area. So we implemented the rainstorm by slowing the expansion of the universe instead of introducing new matter. So so because we slowed down the expansion of the universe, then the matter can accumulate easier. The orange curve represents one of the rainstorm simulations I'll be showing in the following results. Um, so um, this is the picture of the simulation that, uh, that we completed one of them. Uh, on the left, it is uh, exaggerated. We introduced a big rainstorm in the in the middle as shown in the previous graph around this um, a value um, and on the right there is no rain and um, and we can see a difference a subtle difference so this is the period of rainstorm and around this time we can see this one evolves a little bit faster towards the end of the rainstorm. The effect is fairly visible. I will run this simulation a couple of times. And one last time. Um, we'll be seeing the effects in for the detail in the coming slides, but this is basically the, the way we saw our output. Um, we also could export the images in form of density plots, and these are the, these are the density plots that we created out of them. So uh, this is also roughly from different A values. This is the evolution, and the picture on, pictures on the top row are the of the total simulation, and the on the bottom row these are uh, slightly more zoomed in versions. And on the right side, there are two more zoomed in pictures so that we can uh, study the effects in more detail. So I have taken uh, portions from the two highlighted portions and zoomed it on the right hand side. And this is one with no rain. And the next one is with a rain depth of 0 0.68. Um, and this one is with the rain depth of one at a different time frame. So if we, especially running these two uh, back and forth, running these two slides back and forth, I think we can easily visualize the differences, especially in the zoomed in pictures on the right hand side. Sorry. Um, I, I'm not sure about the latency in the Zoom call, so I hope the effect is visible when I'm flipping between slides. Um, so, um, as we can see, when we introduced a rainstorm um, at A equals one, which is the present time, we see that the structures are a little bit more developed. And the third simulation is a, 
of one of the fun ones that we did, which is uh, at rain depth, a higher rain depth, but we implemented it at a relatively early universe. And as we can see, the structure evolution is um, far more, is the, the collapse is far more evident on this one. Um, so we can visualize the effects of a cosmic rainstorm. So the main conclusion of um, what we have been able to do so far is that it uh, intergalactic rainstorm advances the structure formation, whether it introduces some peculiar st structure characteristics is uh, yet to be verified. Um, but at least we can be sure that if um, there is an intergalactic rainstorm, then it advances the structure formation. This is the graphic of um, the evolution with uh, no rain. This one is um, zoomed in, as we can see, this starts at A equals 0 0.4 and ends at A equals 0 0.58. So this is um, the density fields of um, throughout the rainstorm, effectively throughout the duration that we implemented the initial rainstorm, although this one is for no rain. Um, the reason I showed the previous slide is to compare it with this one. So. So this one is with excess rain when we implemented a rainstorm. And then if I do the same thing again, flipping between slides, then uh, towards the right-hand slides, I think, oh, sorry, towards the right-hand slides, we can see uh, the difference in the structural growth. Um, and we can see that um, in the excess rain one, we, the structures are slightly more developed it, the structure formation is more advanced. Um, regarding the next steps of this project, uh, we would like to do a more quantitative analysis of the cosmic rainstorm, uh, how it plays out and its implications uh, elsewhere. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, does it simply accelerate natural growth like, like we saw earlier? Does it just advance the structure formation or does it also help in creation of new structures that would not have been created otherwise without the rainstorm. So these are the next things we would like to explore. Um, but thank you so much for listening. I hope it was informative. That was so awesome. Um, I, I love this idea and slowing down the universe. I mean, come on people, how cool is that? Um, so if there are any questions, please ask in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, Sanjoy has a question already. Glimpse, I wish I was in, in your shoes, because if somebody would ask me, hey, how was your day? I'm like, oh, all right, you know, I just simulated the universe, no big deal. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, my question is, are those cosmic rainstorms just like a theoretical thought of how the universal, the universe structure could be affected? Or is it something that we know has happened? in the past? Um, no, no, uh, it is a theoretical thought so far. Um, and one of the things I think I mentioned here in the motivation slide was um, if we somehow see, if we somehow find, a, let's say, a marker of a cosmic rainstorm in our simulations, then we can maybe look for it in the universe to see if there is actually one certain some, something that happened. But so far, it's a theoretical thought. And we just implemented it to see um, how a difference in rate of expansion would play out um, in the universal scale. Very interesting, thank you. The next question is from McCullen. Yeah, hi, uh, nice talk. Um, I had a question about the setup that, that you did because it seemed like from your plot of a dot over time, the, the effect of the rainstorm. So, see, these two curves look different, um, not just during the rainstorm, but beforehand. So, are you like holding the, the value at A equals one fixed? Um, and then also, is the motivation behind this to solve something like the Hubble tension, or uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, so, regarding the difference in the curves, um, the, the curves that are relevant to us, I demonstrated the EDS because it is one of the more like simpler models of the universe that is very well known. But for the purposes of the project, especially these presentations, I have not demonstrated anything regarding the green curve. So uh, oh, if okay, we sorry. Zoom, yeah, I, did, I didn't see the blue curve there. Okay, never mind. Uh, if we zoom in, then this is the blue curve that is the no rain and the orange curve just has a 
um, dip, which is with the rain. Yep. And so is this a solution to the Hubble tension or anything like that? Um, th that would be probably in the long term, maybe, but not for now. We have not thought that far ahead as of now. Wait, 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 wait. What is the Hubble tension? <laughs> So, uh, based on my understanding, Hubble tension is, uh, I think if we observe the rate of, uh, let me find a way to explain it. Um, can I refer this question to my mentor for now, please? Sorry. Uh, sure. Um, well, yeah, so the, the Hubble tension is um, something that's, been going on for um for about for several years that um it's it's kind of the the big in some ways the i guess the biggest observational cosmology issue um currently uh if we tried to measure the um the hubble constant which is measures how fast the universe is is moving moving it is um expanding um if we measure that using nearby uh, galaxies, um, we get a, a somewhat different value than if we base most of the measurement on the very far away universe, like the cosmic microwave background and very far away galaxies. Um, and the, it's it's a relatively small discrepancy compared to the factor of two discrepancy that happened for a few decades back in in the 20th century um but it's it seems to be persistent there's some new work that see there's always some work that um that's relevant to it there's some new work that suggests that it it's not as big a deal as we thought um i think it's 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 definitely a, a big deal in observational cosmology it's not i don't find it as interesting as <laughs> as um uh some other stuff in cosmology but generally it's yeah it's it is a an established kind of big deal in cosmology. Crazy, <laughs> I love it. Um, we do have to move on to our final speaker now. Glimpse, this is awesome though. Great job. Um, so we have one more.